We have two scripture selections today. The first is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. And our second is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. I invite you now to hear the word of God with an open mind, open ears, and an open heart. I know a man in Christ who was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. I don't know whether it was in the body or out of the body. God knows. I know that this man was caught up into paradise and that he heard unspeakable words that were things no one was allowed to repeat. I don't know whether it was in the body or apart from the body. God knows. I'll brag about this man, but I won't brag about myself except to brag about my weakness. If I didn't want to brag, I wouldn't make a fool of myself because I'd tell the truth. I'm holding back from bragging so that no one will give me any more credit than what anyone sees or hears about me. I was given a thorn in my body because of the outstanding revelations I received so that I wouldn't be conceited. It's a messenger from Satan sent to torment me so that I wouldn't be conceited. I pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me alone. He said to me, my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. So I'm glad to spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. Therefore, I'm all right with weakness, insults, disasters, harassments, and stressful situations for the sake of Christ, because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And then from the Gospel of Mark, he called for the twelve and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick. No bread, no bags, no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave that place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you, as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons, and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our summer worship series is called Plugged In. We're talking about what our life looks like when we are plugged into the Holy Spirit. Uh, when God is at work in our personal lives and God is at work in our church life, church's life, what does that look like? What does that look like? Today we'll see that the Spirit heals. And I invite you to take out or, or uh, get on your phone and, and check out the Traveler's Companion. There's a spot there for you to take notes if that's helpful for you. Also, if you look in the middle of it, there are uh, devotions for every day this week. And we invite you and encourage you to make that a part of your daily prayer visit. Yes, sir? I made sure that you have one. You made sure that you have one? That's awesome. Cool. So y'all all of you have them. Um, so we encourage you to make that a part of your daily discipline. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word, for the ways that it teaches us, for the way that it inspires us. And we pray now that you'll give us your spirit so that we may hear what you would have us to hear and we may do what you would have us to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You ever heard of Ezzy Dame? Ezzy Dame, anybody? Uh, uh, Ezzy is, a, is an actor and a hairdresser, and uh, his agent told him many years ago that he needed to pad his resume a little bit. He said, just write down on your resume, just put down that, that you were an Oompa Loompa in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> and so he did. And so he did. And for about 20 years, Ezzy went around doing tours, talking about, and he would talk about what he did, what it was like to be an Oompa Loompa, uh, how Gene Wilder was to, to work with, and all of that. Well, he finally got caught. Remember several years ago, Tim Burton put out that other movie, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, so the local newspaper called and asked Izzy for an interview, and he gave it to him. Well, one of the real original Oompa Loompas read it and knew that Ezzy was a fake, and so he called the, the newspaper and ratted him out, and there was Ezzy left with egg on his face for everybody to see. I mean, can you imagine having your greatest weakness exposed like that? So what's on your resume? What's 
on your resume. I, several years ago, Reader's Digest did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 830 didn't get that either. Um, they had another cartoon. Yeah. Um, so anyway, several years ago, Reader's Digest did a, did a survey and they asked people, how many of you have, um, I think they said, misstated facts? They didn't say flat out loud. But uh, they said, how many of you have misstated facts on your resume or in a job application? And there were about 20% of people that responded to that survey that said uh, that they had done that. And I wasn't really surprised by that. I was not surprised at all because in the interview process that we have where we get a new job, um, we're told to make ourselves look the best we possibly can. You know, if somebody asks me what to write on their college application or on a job application, I'm going to say, don't say anything negative about yourself, right? And in a job interview, what are you supposed to say if, if they ask you what your greatest weakness is? I am too awesome. Yeah. I work too hard. I am too committed to my job. I just can't stop working. You know, I mean, yeah, it's, we don't ever tell people to tell us their real weaknesses. And we don't want to hear them. And so the whole, that whole thing is an exercise in making ourselves look better than we all know that we really are. I think it's very interesting that when Paul talks about himself, and in this point, in this point of, in 2 Corinthians, he really needs to set himself up as a good guy. He does not boast about his strengths. Instead, Paul decides to boast about his weaknesses. And if anybody had reason to boast, it was, it was the Apostle Paul. And I can tell you for a fact, if it wasn't for the Apostle Paul, none of us would be in this building today. Paul traveled thousands of miles to share the good news with others. He, uh, he would go and preach and teach and set up communities of faith all over the known world in that time. And people responded in an amazing ways, in amazing ways. Uh, they came to Jesus by leaps and bounds. And the fastest period of growth in the history of Christianity was when Paul was alive and doing his missionary journey. None of us would be here without him. Paul also had reason to boast because of his own personal spiritual life. I mean, how many of y'all want to be closer to God? How many of you want to know the deepest mysteries of the universe? Well, Paul says that he was taken in the spirit to the very heart of God. We, we think, we think that this was probably what happened to him when, when he was on the Damascus road. But you know, you know, Jesus slapped him down on the ground and turned his life around. He became, he transformed from the greatest persecutor of Christians into the greatest proclaimer of the Christian faith we have ever, ever known. Paul definitely had reason, reason to boast. But he writes to the Corinthians, and instead of boasting about his strengths, he boasts of his weaknesses. Now, Paul had founded this church, this little kind of really a house church in Corinth, and uh, he did what he always did. He went there, he met people, he called them, he gathered the community together, he taught them the basics of the Christian faith, he trained the leaders, and then he took off to do it again in another town. Well, when Paul left Corinth, and, and really the only thing you need to know about Corinth is that it's like Vegas. What happened in Corinth stayed in Corinth. Amen? Right, very, you know, crazy stuff going on there. But um, he sets up this community, takes off, and some other Christians came behind him. And they said to the church in Corinth, they said, we are much better than Paul. You should do what we say and not what he said. Well, that got back to Paul, and he was pretty ticked off. He said he, uh, it just burned him up. It just burned him up. And then he replies to the Corinthians to defend himself. But it's here that instead of boasting about his strengths and how much better he is than them, instead he boasts about his weaknesses. Listen to what he said just before our passage today. He says, who is weak and I'm not weak? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weaknesses. And then in our reading, Paul mentions that revelation where apparently he was taken up into paradise in 
itself in the spirit and heard the deepest mysteries of God. But for Paul, that, even, that was not even a reason to boast. He says that although he had that vision, he continued to struggle with what he calls a thorn in his flesh. And there's a lot of speculation about what that particular thorn was, and here's what I think it was. I think it's something Paul did. And if he had wanted to tell us what it was, he would have told us. Amen? I think by not telling us, he's saying, it ain't none of your business. Amen? That was between him and God. But he says, I have this thorn in my flesh. And he says, I, I, I went to God and I've asked God three times to take this particular weakness away from me. But God didn't do it. As faithful a person as Paul was, God didn't take that away from him. And then Paul says this. He says, God told me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And then listen to what Paul says. He says, so I will gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. Think about that for a minute. What Paul is saying is that God is so good God is so powerful that God does not need perfect tools to do God's work. Amen? That's a good thing, too, because guess what? All God has is us. Amen? All God has is us. I was thinking about, I, I, I had a, a terrible golfer. Now, Rebecca tells me Kurt's a bad golfer, too. Maybe we need to go play together. Um, I have I have a set of clubs. They are the best set of clubs that my dad could buy when he was in his twenties <laughs> in the nineteen seventies. And uh, but even if I went out and I played with Tiger Woods clubs, I'm not going to get a ball stone. Amen. That's right. But I'm kind of curious. I don't know if this will ever happen or not. But I'm kind of curious what Tiger Woods can do with my clubs. <laughs> what do you think? I think it'd be pretty good. I think it'd be pretty good. Need a hockey stick. Need a hockey. I need a hockey stick. And a basketball. Or something. <laughs> but listen to what Paul's saying. God is so good and so powerful that God does not need the best tools. 